Hello YouTube, today I will be teaching you how to get a realistic render in Cinema 4D. Now I just got R13, um, you might want to, th this will work perfectly in R11 and R12, uh, I'm not so sure about R11, if it has the same uh, uh, stuff it'll work, um, so yeah. So to get started all we have is this bowl and some sort of fruit, okay? and what we want to do is make it look as realistic as possible now we don't want to make the fruit like realistic as in fruit we're just saying realistic looking meaning realistic render realistic colors realistic lighting realistic reflections the reason i'm saying that is because i have no clue how to materialize a fruit okay but uh, we'll give it a try um, so first things first and um, let's take a render and boom right so we have this uh, by the way I'm running progressive so it just get, keeps getting better as we wait so what we have is nothing pretty much so we need to materialize it first so I want this bowl to be white so let's get started with white you could make it a wooden color if you would like uh, that would be also cool but let's make it white for me just completely white and reflection go in here turn on fresnel um that's a good thing with reflection you'll always want to have fresnel on and turn down the brightness turn down the fresnel and uh, just dry for me it always works out with like around 30 um it's just a cool thing to have now you can change the color to get a little bit of tint on the reflection depending on your lighting but uh, it doesn't really matter so now come to the specular. Now specular is set to plastic. You want to set it to colored because plastic just doesn't look good at all unless you're doing something cool, uh, different. You notice the height up. Um, it's the shininess. It's basically how the light will bounce off the um, um, uh, material and uh, if, you, if it's wider basically light hits it in a wide and then bounces off but if it's narrower, there will be a tiny point of uh, highlights. Turn the inner width just a little, little bit. Okay. And uh, boom, we kind of have really cool, um, really cool uh, material. Let's add it to your bowl. For this, I want these to be like greenish, lime green kind of. I don't know what they are, but this kind of green yeah we'll do it. now you always don't want to go for the brighter color um, in real life nothing is exactly standing out it's kind of a satin type of color so you just want to get your perfect color and just pull down a bit there that's the color we're going for and the reflection do this now this will be less reflective a little bit Fresno. You know, look at this highlight and make sure that is correct. Um, colored. Oops, not metal. Color. Oops. Color. And you want to turn that up as well. Actually, you know what? You want to make this actually the height actually smaller because it's like fruit screen skin, so it will kind of um, doesn't have much highlights. So that's kind of what you're going for. So we have our two materials. Let's add it to. All right. So we have that, right? Um, let's take a render. Now, already, as you can see, our render is looking pretty good. Um, but this does not look anything like realistic. It looks more like a really, really old video game graphics. Um, what we're going to do now is just maybe add a plane, um, and maybe position it correctly. I'm still getting used to R13, so bear with me. Um, all right. Okay. 
So now you want to add like a light because the default light just ain't cutting it. So I'm gonna pull it up, and this will be kind of like the light that's the one. I don't know what I'm saying, but yeah. So kind of like right there, and this is reflecting at an a. I mean, this is projecting at an angle. Which is good because naturally nothing is straight on. Um, when you're taking a picture, you'll notice your light usually isn't straight on if you're, unless you're in a studio or whatever. So that's correct. And pull it down a little bit, and I just made. It'll say that you just. Ma I just made everything really bad as our render right now is going to look like crap. As you can see, this looks like crap, green crap, but crap. So what do you do? Um, what we're going to do is something called global illumination. And but before we do that, let's turn on our shadow map soft. And you want to turn your shadow map quality up to like 500 by 500. Um, unless you want really crappy shadows, unless you want really blurry shadows too, blurry shadows. If you want, turn the quality down. Um, so let's take a render with our shadows on now, and everything looks like crap. By the way, this is progressive render. Just hold on. This will keep getting better every pass. Like as you can see, it just keeps getting better. Pass three, pass four. As you can see, it's moving out, but it still looks like crap, right? Um, so what we're gonna do is come in here and uh, turn progress. I'm gonna change it. Okay. Um, go to effect and turn on global illumination. By the way, you don't have to do this. I, you probably don't have this. Don't do this. Anything. Go to global illumination. Just turn it on, okay? And just see the difference. This is taking forever. Okay, I'm gonna pause this and I'll come. I'll come back. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, is it just me or is the Cinema 40 R13 have really slow renders? I just got it today. Thought I'd do it in Cinema 40 R13 rather than R12, but it's taking forever to render. Um, yeah, I have to check the render settings. Hold on a second. I don't even know what's going on. Everything's normal. What the heck is going on? I don't know. Okay. Um. So as you can see, it just isn't working. Um. So what you do at the end, this is your last treat. If lighting doesn't work for you, um, I mean you could add another light here, but the best way to do something is uh, do a realistic render. Just get a sky object, okay? And you go to your content browser. Um, go from here, kind of browser. If you're in R12, I have it right here. And you want to go into Prime or any any anything. You, you could go anywhere, but all you all you need to find is some HDRI. I have one right here, and this is perfect actually. Just get put it in your sky object, and now if you render it out, it will be more realistic. But before we do that, because it is taking so long to render out and do everything at once, I'll. Um, you wanna get your shot ready up and get a camera okay now the most important thing to do is get the camera right um, so you're gonna go to object and turn the focal length uh, if you're doing a close-up you're gonna want like 50 this is like a close-up shot really like, really close up you're gonna get go for a 50 um, if you're doing a wide angle shot you're gonna go for a 24 uh, if you're going for a um, more like a really zoomed in shot, you want to go for like 80 at least. 
So let's uh, let's render this out and uh, hopefully this will be better. Okay, so as you can see, the render is being awesome. Um, now, if you just you know go for a straightforward with the global illumination, you might be wasting time. Um, I mean, yeah, you might be wasting time on render. Sometimes you don't exactly need global illumination. You can get away with it by adding multiple lights. But when you're going for a super close-up shot like this, with where the reflections really matter, you want to go for global illumination and setting up the light correctly, also setting up the camera correctly. Here you go with your super realistic render. Um, if you want, you could also add ambient occlusion, but make sure it's not like when you add it. Make sure this ain't black. Uh, make sure it's like gray. Um, yeah, if you're going for a close-up shot, unless you want to do black, which would be not so realistic. So thank you guys for watching. This has been HD Video Tuts, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.